So DMAR's November market trends report just came out highlighting October's data. And at first look, there's not a lot going on there. In fact, the numbers are all quite muted, making it not very sexy for headlines, right? But if you know what's going on underneath, there's a lot going on there. So I want to throw this into three buckets today. I want to talk about inventory, affordability, and opportunity, because the last one, there's a lot of opportunity. So let's start out with inventory, though, because that's getting the most headline news time right now. Inventory is in crisis mode, right? That's what we're hearing. Is it? I mean, if you look over the past couple of years, 2017, 16, and 15 were crisis mode. 18 started to recover, and 2019 has actually been pretty stable. But it is a bifurcated market. You've got inventory at the lower price points, very different than the inventory story at the higher price points. We actually started changing, don't know if you noticed, but our seasonality has started shifting earlier in the year. We're coming out of the gate at the end of January, excited, home buyers are out, demand is out, inventory's coming out. But by July, we're exhausted. And that's when it turned this year. We started to have the month over month declines in inventory. And October was no exception. In fact, it was the largest one so far this year at a 7.85% decline in inventory month over month. We also saw a decline in new listings. Yet, on the other side, demand is still strong. Sales is up. I don't know if you noticed, but we were talking about sales, the expectation of sales being 1% year over year for 2019. Right now, year to date, we're up 4.42. That's impressive. Right? We're also up in under contracts, just a little over 1%. Demand is up. At the end of October, we were up 2.3% year over year. All of that increased demand with the decreased supply is going to impact our affordability eventually because we're going to start seeing appreciation numbers going up and months of inventory going down. We're already seeing months of inventory declining month over month. In fact, it is really centered around the median sales price. So everything at or below the median, and in the Denver DMAR area, it's 423,000. Everything below the median, and I can actually say this statistic nationwide, is still on fire. There's more demand than there is supply. So not only do you have first time home buyers, you have moved down buyers and investors all vying for that same bucket. If you go above the median, and the further above the median you go, the higher the months of inventory goes. But right now, we're seeing that appreciation is still staying strong. In fact, it's stronger than we anticipated year over year. Year over year appreciation is up 5.8%, but year to date is <laughs> still catching up from the first half of the year, which was so slow. So year to date, we're only up 2.4%. We were thinking we might land somewhere around five. We might be slightly under that, but it's still a great year. 2018 was a great year. So even to be 2.4% above that, I'd put my money in real estate any day. Before we leave the topic of inventory, I have one statistic that I really want to make sure that you hear and don't miss. So there is a change happening with when a home gets listed, at the appropriate price and staged well. So homes that had a price reduction went up to 40%. So 40% of all listings had a price reduction. Interestingly enough, if a home had a price reduction, its days on market was an average of 59 days. If a home did not have a price reduction, its average days on market was 14 days. That's a significant difference. If you're selling your home or you're an agent listing a home, it is more important than ever to list that home at the appropriate price and with the appropriate staging. Getting it sold without a price reduction makes a huge difference. So let's talk about affordability. With the lower appreciation levels we've seen in 2019, especially if you compare it to the last five years, we've seen an improvement in affordability. This is huge. This allows our first time home buyers to get into the market. Now, I had just said that 5.8% is our year over year appreciation in the DMAR area. 
nationally, we're sitting at 3.6%. I bring that up because we've been hovering at 3.6 for about six months now. That's a good thing. That's also the historic national average. It means that we're settling in to this shift in seasons from expansion to recession. That's not a bad thing for housing. In fact, CoreLogic anticipates or forecasts that our appreciation will go up to 5.8% for the next year. That could be significant. What else is helping affordability is our unemployment. It is still at 50-year historical lows. So we just ticked up from 3.5% to 3.6%. Watch that. As we get closer to 4 that means that we're going to start to see that shift into the recession. Wages are still strong when measured on an hourly basis and a weekly basis. On an hourly basis, they're up 3%. On a weekly basis, they're up 2.7%. Here in Colorado, wages are up 3.1% year over year. So the last thing that's really helping affordability is our interest rates. They remain low. So despite the Federal Reserve Board meeting at the end of October and a blip of really good news over the next 48 hours, we did end the end of October on a strong jobs report. So we're seeing interest rates at the end of October, similar to that at the beginning of August, hovering around 3.78 with a half a point discount. All of these factors come together and they allow for our first time home buyers to get in the market, which really leans into, <coughs> sorry, which really leans into our next bucket, which is opportunity. So the consensus is that the expansion is nearing its end and we're heading to sliding into a new normal, right? I mean, buyers and sellers are both still uncertain and exhausted. It's been a long run. Meanwhile, the news cycles want to pick up topics about the recession and the inventory crisis. That's fair. But we have to be alert because this is where the opportunities are about to explode. First time home buyers last month were 33% of the purchases. That's significant and on the high end of the range that they've been traveling for a while. And in fact, as more Generation Z enters into a credit qualifying age, i.e. 18, we're going to see those numbers continue to increase. In fact, the years between 20, uh, 2020 to 2022, we're expecting to see 8.2 to 9.3 million buyers coming in, first time home buyers. That is significantly higher than the years previous. And 44% of them, when surveyed, want to get into buying a home as soon as possible to start building equity and building wealth. I mean, they get it. This real estate market is strong despite what's going on with the economic recession. And I really want to lean in there. It is going to be an economic recession leading into by the stock market and trade wars, not the housing market. So this is exactly where you want to be. So if you want to look into investing in real estate or simply buy your first home, please reach out to me. This is what our team does best. Nicole Ruth with the Ruth Team of Fairway Mortgage. It's our pleasure to serve you.